Just because to ensure the safety and quality of food in trade, one of the regulatory measures employed by the Food and Drugs Authority is sampling and testing of products in trade. With the issue of adulteration of palm oil, which Sudan Dye is coming to the fore, the FDA in 2015, through its monitoring activities, found the level of adulteration to be 98%. Due to key regulatory interventions implemented by the authority, the level of adulteration has generally decreased from 98% in 2015 to 23% in 2021. An increase of 7% in 2018 to 26% in 2020 was observed. However, this dropped to 23% again in 2021. Some of the key regulatory interventions employed included the following. Intensified monitoring of product safety in transit and trading, including annual nationwide sampling and testing of products. Two, detention, seizure, and mandatory disposal of adulterated palm oils. Three, public education at the palm oil production sites, markets, and sensitization of consumers. And four, sanctioning, prosecution, and blacklisting of some of these culprits. Other initiatives taken by the FDA include the following. Training. In collaboration with Solidaridad, West Africa, 5,472 stakeholders, millers, EHOs, fabricators, mill owners, along the oil palm value chain in four major palm oil producing countries, regions, Western, Eastern, Central, and Ashanti, have been trained in food safety, good manufacturing and hygiene practices from August to December 2020. This was to improve food handling practices and safety of finished products. In collaboration with the Artisanal Palm Oil Millers and Outgrowers Association, 992 oil palm processors and mill owners were sensitized on food safety, adulteration, traceability, and good hygiene practices, amongst others, from 23rd May to 3rd June 2022 to improve compliance. Traceability system. Development of a traceability concept to facilitate indentation of sources of adulteration along the palm oil supply chain has been initiated. Pilots of the concept has commenced at the Domi and Malamata um, markets. FDA's progressive licensing scheme. The speaker, enrollment of the oil palm milling facilities into the FDA's progressive licensing scheme at the various FDA regional offices has also commenced. Public education programs. More creative and innovative means of awareness creation, electronic and print, are being developed to deepen awareness of the dangers of Sudan dye in palm oil. Public education community engagement in collaboration with NCCE is ongoing in various metropolis of the greater Accra region, at least. Awareness creation at the markets, schools, lorry stations, churches, mosques, and other public places and engagement in the electronic media, radio, television, and social media to address this more practice and the negative impact on consumer health is ongoing. So speak our way forward and resources required. The current 23% level of Sudan dye adulteration indicates that though the more practice has reduced considerably, it has not been eliminated and therefore persists. It is imperative to continue and intensify enforcement activities to further reduce the level of adulteration to the barest minimum to safeguard public health and safety. This will require a number of resources and government interventions, some of which are listed below. Rapid test kits for Sudan dyes to facilitate monitoring in trade. Vehicles for inspection of production sites and monitoring. Laboratory equipment and chemicals for testing of Sudan dyes. Control of regulatory, control or regulate the importation and distribution of Sudan dyes. The speaker, we have the following programs that are upcoming. 
engagement with market queens and aggregators to enroll them into the traceability system. Continuous monitoring of parboil supply chain actors for compliance to food safety and traceability record keeping. Collaboration with the artisanal palm oil millers and agro association to initiate all its members into a progressive licensing scheme. And, Mr. Speaker, liaising with environmental health departments for the various MMDAs at the regional and district levels to put in place a continuous monitoring system for oil power processing activities to ensure practices are consistent with GMP requirements. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.